Uh, over the past month, students have been involved in ongoing street demonstrations against the government's plans to treble university tuition fees. But does direct action do any good? Well, Anita Rani picked up a placard and went to find out. Many of us have been taken aback by the scale and ferocity of recent student protests against the planned hikes in tuition fees. Huge public protests, sit-ins, the talk of civil disobedience, the storming of government buildings, not really something we're used to seeing in Britain anymore. But does direct action work? And as the cuts slash deeper, are we about to see more of it? Last week, as students once again took to the streets, I went to see for myself. They're really young. Young, determined and angry. We believe that we have the right to protest, we have the right to civil disobedience, we have the right to occupy our universities, we have the right to shut our schools down and shut the entire education sector down in defense of higher education. Is the criminal damage justified? I believe the, we need to be celebrating the, the siege on Millbank Tower. We need to be celebrating the fact that students are storming buildings because in reality it has inspired millions of people up and down the country. Many current demonstrators are themselves inspired by previous campaigns. In 1990, thousands took to the streets to protest against the poll tax. I mean, at the beginning, it, it, it was a complete carnival atmosphere. Lots of people coming with their own families, coaches, trains had come from all over the country. It was a tremendous atmosphere, a feeling of strength, a feeling that everybody was together against the poll tax. But the demonstration turned into an infamous riot. These scenes are often credited with bringing an end to the unpopular tax, but the demonstration was only part of a much wider campaign. People in the press often focus on the demonstration, but actually that was in March 1990. Margaret Thatcher went in November and the actual poll tax went a year later. It was the year of hard work in the local areas, organising in the courts, organising against the bailiffs. That's what defeated the poll tax. Back on last week's education demonstration, and it's clear that both police and students are changing their tactics, trying to outwit each other. Okay, you can see the students are marched this way. The police are already here waiting for them, and everyone is really aware that the police may kettle them in. So they're all backing out and going the other direction. In fact, you can hear people saying, whatever you do, don't stop, because the police will have us there for ages, so just keep moving. To avoid being trapped by the police, students scatter, turning the demonstration into a giant game of hide-and-seek. So now, the march is in free fall, and we're currently marching along Piccadilly. This was definitely not planned for. It's all very different to the protests of the 60s, where police and students clashed head-on outside the American Embassy in Grosvenor Square. Now he's a journalist with an uncompromising line on law and order, but back in the day, Peter Hitchens was part of the anti-Vietnam protest. We all thought that the thing to do was to be against the war in Vietnam, and it was a good thing to shout against. It made us feel superior and good. People do it because it's fun. Don't ever doubt for a moment that people do it because it's fun. Uh, the, the idea that in a, a free country with universal suffrage and a free press and free speech, anyone needs to start a rumble on the street to get their point of view across. It's fatuous. You do it because you like it. Back with today's students, and it looks like part of their protest is being hijacked by others with a darker agenda. That's definitely not going to make a difference. You know, they, they don't know what they're doing, and it's, it's a laugh and it's a joke and, and, it's, and it's not helpful. Who are you fighting? Who, who, who's this against? Who are we trying to battle? It shouldn't be the police. Because that, that means quite a lot to a lot of people, that column, and that's quite important to our country. And, and what that does is that's alienating the public, because the public needs to be on side, because the only way the government will change their decision isn't, isn't by us telling them it's wrong. They don't care. The only way the government will change their decision is, is if, if students the wider are, public, if a na nation the wider public say we're not happy with this. With no sign of the current student unrest going away, what's the advice from the two protest veterans with very differing points of view? Ultimately, this is because we haven't got enough money, and it's got to be found from somewhere. If they want the money to be spent on them, they've got to decide where else it's got to come from. And this kind of childish, give it to me because I'm going to smash some windows, is no way to conduct yourself in a free country. What I would say to them is they need to think about how to organise, how to maintain the campaign and take the lessons of the poll tax, that it takes a lot of organisation in every town, every city, every school, and then they can win. Well...
a good film, an interesting film, but I think we need to lighten the mood now. How